So this is ground zero on these issues of ecologies and that Florida has soil such that when you go across it once, it might tear a little bit at the roots as they're intertwined. And the second time, if it's not had enough time to grow above visually, then you know that it hasn't grown below and you walk on it a second time, then it tears a little more. And within my area, there was places where our, there was no, no grass growing. I could grade this all out, but when you take a single step, it mushes in two, three, four inches. Okay, so what is the deal? This is, this is an area where there's not a lot of nutrients. Uh, there's not a deep nutrient layer. But with that, we learn a lot about ecologies and how to support when you're on the fine line of going between xeric and mesic plant ecologies. And when you're on the fine line of doing something on these surfaces that affect the weather patterns to be full drought or more like a, a, a mesic, which is rain for it, tropical. So you can encourage regular rain and or regular drought, depending on how you treat these surfaces because they have the grasses have the ability to protect that soil. They're right there with it. Their shade never moves from it, okay? That's why the grasses are superior on protections for the soil, the soil microbes specifically, but that the soil microbes digestion is what create the fer fertile soil. That's what creates the, the fertility. Um, so anyway, its shade pattern doesn't move. It stays there it's closest to its demographic, so it gives the best representation for that demographic. And it's in a symbiotic process where it's more than happy to yield the top of its plant uh, to go back to the soil. And that's where we come in with the regular mowing. We can support uh, a better thing. But this being ground zero, if you you know, if we can figure out now here where there's most of the nutrient layers gone from it being underwater for so long in it, uh, you know, being mostly sand, then, then it applies to other areas of the country. Unless you think the biggest problem we're going to have down the line is, you know, an abundance, too much nutrients, too much nutrition in our food, too much, uh, plant growth. Um, it's really unlikely when you compare it to what's more likely to happen is no nutrition, more areas leaning towards full zeric, full desert plant ecologies, and more radicalized weather. You you almost can't see unless it's bio, you know, a bacteria or viral component. You almost can't see the end of humanity from an abundance of nutrition, an abundance of of growth. So that's why I kind of. I'm reluctant to go out cutting on lawns that haven't shown any growth above because you know that the roots have not had growth either to re-mend uh, from the traffic from the prior cutting. And that's very damaging to my business model because the way I price my, my services is per cut because of this fact. Because... One way or another, when you say that you want monthly compensation, somehow when you're in drought or you're in this or you're in that, they feel shorted if you're not there all the time, if they're making a steady payment, right? So then that brings in that where people mow a little bit lower. Now you've lost your shading for the soil um, or you, you mow even though it's droughted and then you're blowing away the, what nutrients you have. Or you, uh, well, you know, I mean, it, it it doesn't bode well. The problem, the only problem I have, all my systems are proven. The only problem I have is people buying it. Is people believing that there's a better way. Of people believing that, that the grasses are the most important because of their ability to exchange carbon for oxygen because of their ability to shade the soil, because of their ability to, to fluctuate growth rates to compensate for solar 
flares or fluctuations in how much intensity comes through the atmosphere in the moment above the ability of all other vegetation. The fact that if you cut below the genetic desired expression of the long grasses in general, that you're going to downregulate gene hormone signaling for stomatocyte receptor density, and then you throw off all those, that you can actually create an ecology that promotes regular rain patterns and regular uh, and moisture retention, that the long grasses themselves can actually transpire moisture from excess in the soil out to the atmosphere, and then inversely through drought in the morning, it pulls in the moisture from uh, from the atmosphere in the form of, of, of uh, dew or, you know, just uh, pulls it in and then supports the microbes through absences of rain. Um, just a lot of factors that, that can't be sold um, because I don't know exactly why it's, it, it's, I think it's a lot to do with, um, that they come from an area where, um, where they have a, a deep nutrient layer and they've never had a problem with mowing very low and then ha losing their lawn, you know, and it turning straight to sand. But the, the progression of circumstance that happens here is you mow low the, the microbes then are solar exposed, so they either go deeper or get killed. Then, because there's less fertility in the soil, the, the long grasses start using their starch reserves. When that's exhausted, the long grasses completely, uh, with, uh, they die out. Then you have patches of sand that have a lot of mica and silica that cause uh, adjacency uh, desiccating effects. So those little particles of sand and even just the, the color and nature of that soil is going to take that one little patch where there's less moisture and migrate it out to the rest of the lawn because of our proximity to the equator, et cetera, and soil composition. So the the, the big issue is that gradually I've been driven out of business because there's just so many people that come out and they're of the corporate mindset and it's not regenerative mowing practices, like regenerative farming. And regener regenerative farming, they do organic entrainment. Now we don't till under in the process of mowing, but we have all those little nano robot equivalents called soil microbes that would take any cellulose that we put near, so that's why we have to machine the top off of it or machine the leaf particles so that some edges can fall down within the canopy and thatch where those vampiric type, robotic type soil microbes in the millions and uh, can, can consume it, digest it, and then their fertility um, yield back to the ecological chain of benefit and then from that benefit it migrates into our food uh, production areas instead of depleting from it because of something I call adjacency um, it's just you know another way of saying you know you want to do a thermal break and a compost channel edging between hardscape and lawnscape you want a, an abundance on the not on the got side and worry less about the not side. Some people, their perspective is every weed in every bed has to be gone for neatness and tidiness. Every variation of height has to be gone. Uh, and that causes a pollution that can't be fixed because the plants themselves express the neurotoxins and the enhanced allergens and the things it wants to use as a biochemical means to get rid of the people that are doing that to the plant there if you had a picture of the long grass you could say the top is the yield for the soil microbes in a perfect balanced ecology you get a little lower than that and now you're into the meat of where you're going to cause drought and storms etc and then i'd like to make a little chart for that all right i gotta go